is Eric Fine of 72 PC, and welcome to this week's Quick Hits. This week, we've got the launch announcement of the PS5, Rocket League finally puts a date on free to play, and a plethora of stuff in between. But first, let me tell you what I'm excited about. And what that is, is a brand new Harry Potter game for consoles. This one is going to be called Hogwarts Legacy, and it's going to be developed by Port Key Games. Now that name may sound familiar to you, and that's because they've actually made Harry Potter games in the past. Two of them, actually. But those were made in conjunction with Jam City and Niantic. And those were both on cell phone. So there's a big difference in the game world between mobile games and console games. So this is gonna be their first foray into console games, which does worry me because while this IP is ripe to have a really good, rich RPG in it, it also deserves what I feel is a more seasoned developer to do it. Now the studio was stood up just to do Harry Potter games. So maybe they're gonna load it in with some talent that knows what they're doing on consoles and my worries for not. I hope so because man, this could be really good if they nail it. And some of the mobile games for magic casting, they're doing these things where you trace a spell around to make little whoop de doos and whirly cues and stuff. Well, if they was to implement something like that on the console version, where you're maneuvering your wizard around while actually having to use a joystick to trace out a certain pattern for a spell, it could be kind of fun in a combat where you're having to dodge someone while you're trying to cast. It can make it very tricky, very difficult, almost dare I say Dark Soulsian, where you have to really master what you're doing with the spells to be able to effectively use them in combat. Now, that's just me bullshitting and just kind of throwing some stuff out there I'd like to see. We really have no idea what this is gonna be because the launch trailer really showed no gameplay footage. So right now it's all hype because, hey, it's Harry Potter, it's an RPG and it's a PS5. So outside of that hype, there's really nothing there. I mean, hell, they only said 2021 for the release. They didn't even give us a season. So as far as we know, we're gonna get this next Christmas and let's just hope it's a good game. Fingers crossed. Well, enough about that. Let's get into the PS5 conversation. And really, there's not a whole lot there to talk about except for, hey, they've announced their consoles. They've set the price point, And just like Xbox, they have two price points as well. They have a $500 console and a $400 console. The difference between them and Microsoft is how they're getting the price difference. Microsoft got a $500 or $300 console because they differed in the hardware. And by differing the hardware, it's actually making a difference in performance of the system. Where Sony wanted to keep a baseline on what the system can do. So what they did to change the price around is they actually made one digital only. So the cheaper console will not be able to use disks. Everything has to be downloaded over the internet. So while Microsoft's approach will probably allow them to sell more consoles, I feel Sony's approach is actually going to be better for the ecosystem because you have one console that developers are making it for. On the Xbox, you have a weaker console that you have to make sure that you don't limit out. But with Sony, if it works on one, it works on the other. So, hey, how about it? Other than that, we know that the release date's gonna be November 12th and that pre-orders, well, They said they would give us heads up and then they end up giving us less than 24 hour notice and some retailers actually put them up immediately. So good luck in your pre-order if that's the way you want to go about it. Either way, eh, hopefully you get a hold of one. Well, let's move on to some Rocket League news. And what that is, is we know when free to play is going to launch. September 23rd is now the official day that Rocket League will go free to play. As of mid this week, they launched the first half of the update, which featured a new UI, and started to put the hooks in for some of the new systems like tournament and the higher ranks. So when September 23rd comes and free to play launches, the tournament feature will be unlocked, the new season one will start, and we'll finally be able to start seeing supersonic legends. So for all you high level players, race to see who's first. So now let's move on to some Fall Guy news. They recently released their mid season patch. And what this introduced to the game was variants of most of their maps. So what they've been doing is subbing out obstacles with new obstacles or just adding new obstacles to the level. An example of this is in Hit Parade, where at the very end of the level, when you're going up the slime hill, they had the pillars that were going back and forth. Well, they've now subbed those pillars out with swinging hammers. So if you haven't played Fall Guys in a little bit, because it was getting a little samey, they now have these variant maps in the rotation that might help freshen things up for you. So you should probably get back in there and finish your battle pass up before season two drops. So last bit of news we got for you this week is from yet another Nintendo Direct. It feels like they've been having these every week here in the last month or two. But this one was about Monster Hunter Rise. 
Monster Hunter Rise is going to be the new entry in the Monster Hunter franchise following up this highly successful Monster Hunter world. This game so far is only going to be on the Switch and is going to be introducing a new element to the game that wasn't previously there and that is actually playing into the world verticality. In the past if you wanted to get higher you had to find a ridge and traverse it to get up to a higher ledge. Now, with the introduction of what they're calling wire bugs, you're able to essentially just zip yourself up to any location that you want, including just midair. And this is making for some really interesting combat, where some of the gameplay footage they're showing is showing people throwing themselves up in the air and then slamming down on the monsters. So I just can't wait to get four different people zipping around with their wire bugs and just going airborne trying to attack all these different monsters. Especially with things like Rathalos, whenever they would go up in the air, they'd be paying the ass, especially if you're running something like a hammer that you couldn't propel yourself up with. This now gives everyone the element of verticality needed to address some of these monsters. Along with this launch, they're introducing a new sort of helper. Traditionally in Monster Hunter franchise, you've had Palicos, which are your little cats that'll be in combat with you and assist you. Now, they're introducing something called a Palamute. And what this is, is effectively a dog. And this dog is something you can ride so you can sprint in game without using your stamina. And while riding them, you can also do things like eat and heal and stuff like that. So it's kind of a nice traversing the map kind of assistance, as well as they will fight with you in combat. In this new game, they're going to allow you to have two helpers. So you can still have your Palico that's there to heal you and have your Palamut that's gonna be there to get you across the stage and help you fight some when you get to the new monsters. And speaking of monsters, they added quite a few new ones into this. And a lot of them, unlike previous games, really strike notes of reality while still being the monsters, at least in my eyes. They have this bird that reminds me so much of a stork. Like I'm just looking at this thing thinking you are just a giant stork, which is terrifying. The beak on those things is a freaking weapon. So in the game, of course, the beak on that thing's a freaking weapon. But they're also returning some traditional monsters. They've only really shown one so far and they've called out there will be more. So it's always nice to have that kind of throwback. They also announced a new RPG, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. Now, this doesn't really pique my interest, mainly because Monster Hunter to me is the hack and slash, attacking, fighting monsters, like giant monsters. That is the game to me. This is more of a narrative heavy, traditional RPG. So while it doesn't really, you know, play to me, other people will probably enjoy this. And they have called out that there will be crossovers between the two games. So if you do get both, expect some kind of interaction between the two games. They did give us release dates on both of these, thankfully. Monster Hunter Rise is due to release March 26th of next year. And Monster Hunter Stories is supposed to be in the summer of next year. So if you're a friend of the Monster Hunter games, like myself and a lot of other people in the 72 PC community, I hope you're excited about this as I am. And finally, I'm going to leave you with what I see as the deal of the week. And that is Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes are both 50% off right now. These are beautiful remakes taking the original feel of Resident Evil 2 and 3 and adapting it to a more modern gameplay. So if you were a fan of these series, I highly, highly recommend you go get these. Well, that's all I got for you guys this week. So, until next week, game on.